um, put it. Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome again to uh, Marketing Campaigns webinar by RD Marketing and My Biz Marketer. My name is Rima, and uh, Eunice and myself are going to be your hosts today. We've got the team here as well, Nepton, Moray, and Panina. Um, so, you know, feel free to obviously um, message on the chat. If you have any questions or any comments that come up, feel free to do that. We're really excited about today. Um, Eunice, you want to introduce yourself as well? Sure. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, we're very happy to have you. My name is Eunice Nindat, uh, founder of My Biz Marketer. We do marketing and advertising for startups and SME. So we're so happy to have you. So we would like to invite you to interact with us. We're going to go through the basics of marketing campaigns for SMEs and startups with a, a small stop at what big companies do, but just so you should, to, so you know what happens at the uh, enterprise level. And then, um, you know, snapshots of, um, you know, campaigns that we see locally and internationally, but it's for you. So interject when you can, uh, ask questions. If something's not clear, please feel free to interrupt and ask a question, all right? So welcome. Great, yeah. So a bit about us, of course, we are a marketing companies. We help and partner with other organizations, whether startups or SMEs. And we love to actually work with you depending on mm -hmm. what your needs are. Um, so always love to have a conversation. If you'd like, we can always reach out to us and you know um, set up a 30, 30 minutes uh, free consultation. We, we call it a discovery meeting, um, either with Eunice or myself, and we're happy to um, have a conversation around how we can help you guys out. But for today, this is all about you guys and how you guys can run marketing campaigns. So moving on. So this is so this is kind of a table of contents of what we're going to be running today. So we're going through the fundamentals, um, check on the bigger picture, what are the key concepts, what are your goals? Of course, goals are really important even before you start running any campaigns. Who is your audience? What audience are you running the campaign for? What's the customer journey going to be looking like when you're running the campaigns? Are the salespeople ready for your campaigns? Um, creating the campaign itself, um, the steps to follow, preparation work, uh, before the campaign, during the campaign, what you need to do and after the campaign. Um, stay with us until the end. We've got some free resources for you as well. So whatever we're um, um, kind of be going to do today we have some free resources we'll be able to send to you um, over email so um, that'll be that'll be helpful for you guys uh, when you're running your own campaigns uh, what are this message design uh, what are the stakeholders some of the key metrics again marketing is quite scientific um, so we love to actually um, run some data around it so we have to uh, measure so metrics around that some technologies to use and what's the next event? Because normally every month we do two events. One is a webinar and the second one is a Q&A chat. So the Q&A chat um, information on that will also be coming um, soon on that. All right, so just a bit about what kind of campaigns to run as well. The times you can run a commercial campaign, which is quite uh, related to you know, your business um, whether it's an offer or, you know, just a generic one. But there's also um, campaigns are a run around uh, creating an awareness, right? It could be something that you're um, very passionate about. You know, it could be uh, women's health or men's health or something like that. So campaigns don't necessarily have to be commercial. It doesn't have to not always have an offer, for example. And we're going to take you through some of those as well. Okay. So, sorry, one second. Um, all right, so Eunice, you wanna take them through the fundamentals? Um, so the fundamentals of marketing uh, campaigns are basically that marketing campaigns have, are designed to achieve a certain goal. You as the marketing manager of a company or 
you're a founder of a startup, have a goal in mind. The goal could be retention of customers, uh, growth, uh, new business. If you're an e-commerce platform, you're trying to drive sales, you have certain goals. So you set up a pathway to achieve those goals. So your campaign has a design plan to achieve those goals. And so you want to sit down and create a purpose of this campaign. What's the message going to be like? What's the imagery going to be like? The entire strategy is written down. And most people sometimes don't give that a thought. And sometimes that's why our campaigns fail. So these sit, sit down with your team and stakeholders. Sometimes, as I, and, and I've been here myself, I've been in a situation where um, I'm the I'm the entire team, the stakeholder, the campaign generator, the, the graphic designer, the message creator. So I'm having a meeting with myself. So I tell self, okay, you're doing the graphics, right? You're doing the, the messaging. What, what combination of all this is going to work? And so whatever you are, whatever capacity you are, think this through, collect all this information and we'll map it out all towards your goal. So the fundamentals are, create that plan and put things together so that when you start to set out to do the campaign, you've, you're ready and you've gone to the point where you've got the message, the designs, the content, the context, the, the textures, the idea all the way through to the metrics. Next slide. So the big picture. So you, you've heard that song by Biggie Small, more money, more problems. So big enterprise have more money so they can do bigger things. And so their planning and implementation and their launching is even bigger than, than ours who are with smaller days. Uh, the SMEs, we've got smaller budgets, we've got smaller teams, we've got, um, you know, we don't have that big playing field. We, we, we can't do the big, expansive uh, TV commercials with followed by outdoor advertisements, followed by some print stuff, followed by activations. But this guys, this is their big picture. This is what it, look, it looks like. So they have the big team to execute on all this. So this strategy, uh, these, uh, you know, they've got, uh, they've got an organization that, uh, you know, within the marketing team, they've got the advertising team, they've got the metrics team and all that good stuff. This is all that goes into play when they, they, they go into their marketing campaign and their advertising campaign and all these guys play in sync. This is all the considerations when you think about the test process of, um, of the campaign. They will test everything out. They'll even test the image. Will this image resonate with our audience? They'll put out an image and tip to see if that works. They'll test out the um, the the audio if the if the voice of the person they're going to use in that campaign is going to work, and then implementation. They will experiment with a, a certain video, do A and B testing all the way. So they short term and long term, and in the long term they'll do a series of. And I'll give you an example. I think Prima is going to talk about this down the road. Think, look at what Mpesa and Safaricom has done with Mpesa. They're consistently doing videos and uh, print stuff and uh, outdoor campaigns and TV commercials and stuff. But some are long term. Some which are called drip, so that you're constantly reminded of Mpesa, and you'd ask yourself, "We know about Mpesa, but why do they have to keep doing the campaigns?" They have to, so that you keep remembering. And as the product evolves, they want you to remember it. Next slide, Dreamer. Sorry, so yeah, just, uh, just a reminder to, for everyone just to keep their uh, uh, mics on mute uh, while the presentation is going on, um, just so that we don't miss out on anything. Um, great, so I mean, before we even jump into the key concepts, um, I would really love to know um, whether you guys have run a campaign before. So I'm just gonna launch a poll over here and um, tell me if you have You've run a campaign or not run a campaign, either one is fine. We just want to know like uh, where you're at. And remember the campaign doesn't necessarily have to be something that is an offer. 
it could actually be, you know, um, it could be something that uh, you ran just to, to let people know, create an awareness about something. Um, so it doesn't have to necessarily be that, uh, that buy one, get one free or 30% off, you know, because people feel like campaigns are about that, or it could just literally be a brand awareness about your business. It could be about anything. So let's see. Okay. Oh, good, right. good. Yeah, that's good. good. 60% have done a campaign before. Awesome. That's lovely. Okay. Um, share results. There you go. Okay. Now let's see what's our next one. All right. So here's another one, which is if you have run some campaigns, um, how many campaigns have you run? So if you haven't run a campaign, don't you don't need to write anything down in here. But if you have run any campaigns, how many campaigns have you run? Wow, I like it. Got Ooh, ten. We've got, got campaign warriors in here. Yeah, so that's great. That's great. So there must be things that work and don't work. And I'm sure you guys can actually be part of this conversation. So we'd love to also hear from you when we're when we're carrying on with this. So this is really good. I spotted a question from Joe. Okay, I'm just gonna close this poll. Awesome. Sharing results. One out of five. Good two that have done six to ten. These are campaign warriors. Yeah. We could learn something from some people here. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so that's the uh, we'll carry on with the polls later on as well. So let's see. Okay, great. Sounds good. So the key concepts around this, um, and you can see here is again something I was telling you. Um, coronavirus, that's been a major campaign, which is a worldwide campaign that every uh, government has been running um, to let people know that to fight the virus, you've got to stay at home. That's a campaign right there. You know? So the concepts around this is to create um, your distribution channels. How are you going to do this? So like, for example, WHO decided that they're going to work with governments to then distribute this information to everybody. The segments, of course, here was worldwide and everybody. But you see everyone's... Um, business doesn't always have to have everyone as their customer. Um, so buyer personas are very important to understand. So who are you actually selling this to? Sometimes you have like, for example, a set of different, like even the cakes. So we had somebody in here who was saying you know, they do cakes. So even the cakes, you've got some cakes which are maybe family oriented. There are cupcakes which are maybe children like them more. So then how are you segmenting your customers? You know, so you understand that. Um, then determine how your prospects are going to buy them. Where are they going to buy them from? Are they going to buy them from your shop directly? Are they going to buy them online? Are you going to create a, a WhatsApp for business and people are going to, um, you know, order from there? Uh, do you going to have a distribution channel where you're sending out to supermarkets or you have other distributors for you? What is it and how, you, how are your prospects going to buy this? And can you map out your campaign results and revenue? So when you're doing a campaign, of course, you've got to set your objectives way before you even start. Who is it for? What is it for? What would you like to achieve? And a lot of times, you know, people, of course, want when, they, when they're starting up, they want sales. But at the end of the day, I understand that sales is really important. Of course, it's important. We want the revenues to come in. But it's also important how people are getting to know about you. And here's the other thing, which I find that is really, really important. Um, it's called, you know, getting to know from the peers. So your customers' peers, uh, whether your product or service is great or not. So starting to get customer feedback and reviews from your clients can actually help you run your campaign even better because then you're getting your customers to be able to give, give you reviews and then new recent reviews are then viewed by other people, your potential customers, so that they may be able to then now uh, purchase because they can see, oh, there's a new person over here who said uh, they like their product. Great, I'm going to give it a shot, even if I don't know this particular company. So 
that's how you'd be able to like move forward in terms of like the key concepts. Okay. Um, like I mentioned, what is your goal? Um, you know, in your in your campaign, or what do you what would you like to run for it? Of course, there's the lead generation, like I mentioned, and then new customers. Digitally, um, it could be creating brand awareness. Um, digitally, online and offline, I would say. Uh, remember what Eunice said, that um, you'd go around all over Kenya, and now, of course, outside of Kenya as well, and you'd see um, on your wall, there's branding. So there's outdoor branding for m outdoor branding for Safaricom. And then you wonder why, because I know Safaricom, why are they keeping on doing this? It's because they do not want you to forget, even for a second, that they exist and that they would like you to use their services. Right, so it's in your face, and of course they run different campaigns because they also want to keep it fresh. They want to keep it new. They want to, you know, make sure that you uh, connect with them through and through and all the time. They want they don't want the boring thing as well of the monotonous uh, same uh, message all the time. Um, so they're evolving. They're innovating. Mpesa, where it started and where it is right now, is a very different thing as well. So innovation is part of marketing. So keep that in mind. But these are some of the goals that you can keep think about uh, when you're doing campaigns. Right, Tennis? Right. So your audience is so paramount, it's so important because if you do not define this as you're defining your goals, then the, the, the entire premise of your campaign is going to miss the mark. You're gonna waste your money, you're gonna waste your time and all your resources. Defining your audience, understanding your audience is going to be paramount. Here's the reasons why. The imagery you pick, the message, the words, the context, everything that you pick, even the location and the placing of your, of your media is going to be important. For example, look at the ad, we, the print ad we've got in front of us. Um, do, you, do you feel this ad resonates uh, with children and meet yourself if you'd like or comment in chat do you think cooperative bank was able to reach children with this print ad could be a yes no as well if you're you know <laughs> joe says oh no <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Yeah. Okay, great. I, I want to know. All. I, I yeah. want to know, like, from a couple of people, why they do not think that think this it is. Did. Yes, yeah. I have my thoughts on this, and I want to see if anybody thinks the same. So maybe we've got um, <laughs> we've got a lot of no's. Okay. Why? So like, yeah, Fiona, maybe you would you like to like unmute and maybe talk to us about it? Oh, Linda, I like your answers. The colors of absolutely love the colors. Yes. Hey, everyone. <laughs> um, Hi. Yeah, uh, I think I agree with one comment which uh, Linda has put uh, down on the comment section. Actually, what I want to also what I, what I wanted to say. Uh, the ad is very playful in terms of colors. We know children love colors, yeah. but the imagery is not, um, if you are to walk with a child somewhere and they were to spot this, they only know this is put out for them. So mm -hmm. if it to be more um, children oriented, maybe they would have focused on the Jumbo Junior because it's that it would attract them more as opposed to uh, an, an adult on the face of the advertisement. Bing. Okay, who else? Great, Fiona. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, Fiona. That was awesome. I'll change the lady. Maybe use a child. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Yes. Or change, change the, the lady. lady. Yep. Your piggy bank. Yeah. Yep. Yes, Jathaniel, you can uh, unmute yourself. Um. Hello. Hi. Hello. And um, so I think the imagery itself the individual does not strike me as a child or kid <laughs> rather and another thing like i think there's a computer there which does yes. not really resonate with kids i think so got it got it okay all right um i think you all spot on 
I'm thinking what cooperative bank was going for is that the lady there is ready to help your child. And the thing is, um, then this ad was meant for the parent, but then the kid colors then are off because me as a parent, I'm going, huh? You see what I'm saying? So the, the messaging and the imagery did not match. So the audience is off. So you're all right. If it was the kid that they were targeting to be excited about having a bank account and so that they're asking their mom and dad, I want a bank account. And they should have had something of a kid with a, something with a kid in it so that the kid is actually pushing the audience that the bank is targeting to demand for a bank account. Um, so they should have thought this through. And uh, Joe, you asked, should you have a focus group to, de uh, to uh, an A-B test, uh, right image and messaging? They could have done that and, and had two groups and actually four sets of groups uh, to determine right image, uh, right you know, setup um, and see if this works. Print-wise, and Rima and I had this discussion, we're going print-wise, this didn't work. But if it was a video and she was talking and she was saying, hey, I'm here to help you open an account and there's a kid sitting on the other side of the desk opening an account, then this could have gone very well. So the media type is different. So that would have rendered better than the print. So print-wise, this doesn't work. But if it was a, a video commercial, it could have done maybe better, right? So this is why you got to think about your audience and how they receive it in the type of uh, media type you're using it. So it may be a plain wash if you do a billboard and you're trying to get conversions and all you get is brand awareness, right? So something to think about. So think about the media, your audience first. The first place to think about is the audience and how they're going to receive this. All right, next slide, Rena. So the customer journey. Um, so this customer journey is important to think about. So if, if we go back to your audience and how they buy, so they've seen your ad, what's the next step? Are they going to your website? Are they coming to your um, to your shop to, to buy cake and uh, or buy some snack. Think about the next step of interaction. So what have you asked them to do? So if you've given them an offer, think about the entire journey and make sure you've thought it through so that when they they're triggered to buy from you, that that trans journey is smooth so that it that then your ad is or your campaign is successful because think about this if you create an offer get 20 percent of or come open an account and then that that process is not thought through then it will be a failed um campaign it will be a failed campaign the process of thinking it through is maybe having your sales team ready to receive calls questions um, it respond to email, chat on the web, inquiries, or any any anything any customer touch point that is triggered from your campaign. So think about all those things. Having everything ready, your literature, uh, and your the, the tools that you require, so that if this the, the, that so that this, somebody responding to that email or somebody responding to uh, a sales call. Uh, and th somebody knowledgeable, not somebody who's going to sort of say, hey, let me get back to you, because then you're going to lose that customer. Think this whole through of when that customer then responds to your uh, campaign. Next slide, Rima. Right. So remember that, you know, marketing is one of those tools that creates leads, right? We are the ones who bring in the leads. So when we're doing the campaign, this is exactly what's going to happen. But then after that, who's going to be able to convert that lead into a sale, right? So you've got to make sure that you're not working in silo. You've got to work with your sales team on that, right? And of course, some yes. of the ways you can be able to do that is, you know, um, do the, the reporting on that, make sure that there's accurate reporting on certain things, make sure there's an ROI on this. So for example, your, your sales team will be able to tell you that you brought in X number of leads and this is how much we'll be able to convert. So you've got an ROI on that. 
um, the, of course, you know, create maybe salespeople would be like, actually the feedback I'm getting from clients is X, Y, and Z, like for example, the cooperative one, right? So you can then um, tweak the, 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 the campaign around a little bit and put a kid in there and change the literature or the, change the words around it, you know? Um, maybe you need to have better tools to work, uh, you know, the whole uh, sales funnel so then create that, you know, so keep improving the uh, campaign. Remember that uh, Eunice mentioned the A-B testing. A-B testing is something that we do constantly in every campaign. We can know our clients really well. We can know our target audiences pretty well, what kind of images they love, what kind of colors they love, what kind of words they love, um, what, what kind of appeals to them. However, there's always the, like tweak something around maybe change the heading, maybe change the image, maybe change one thing at a time. And you'll be able to see like that has a much better effect. So you know you can do more of that. So you can start improving the campaign and run around that. Of course, you know, you spend quite a bit on campaigns. Even your thousand bob is quite a bit, right? So you wanna make sure that you're um, making it more as efficient as possible, you know, when you're running your campaigns. Okay. All right. so. Again, steps, steps to create a marketing campaign. Um, you have the goal, you generate your ideas, create a strategy around it, understand your target audience, like I mentioned. You've got to deliver a couple of messages. What's your call to action gonna be? Your call to action could be call us now. It could be go to the nearest supermarket and purchase it. It could be, I mean, it depends on what your product is, of course, right? Um, a lot of times it could even be like, um, register now like for example mm -hmm. this this webinar had register now if you haven't registered please register you know so that could be one of those things um it could be try off have, you know try a free trial so the free you have a freemium product and you want that to be a call to action so the call to actions can be changed depending on what your product or service is and what you're actually uh, promoting at that particular time for the campaign um, it could even be like, um, get your vaccine, you know? So, <laughs> I mean, like for me, okay, I'm telling you right now, let me be black and white about it. I went for my vaccine on Tuesday and I have a bit of a fever and I feel I'm not completely 100%. But you see, it was effective. The fact that I actually went and got my vaccine, that campaign is going really well. So, um, so that's a, that's a call to action. It could just be, you know, here are all the all the hospitals where the vaccines are available. Go and get your COVID vaccine. Um, measure. So again, the measurement in here would be how many people after the campaign or during the campaign have come now to get their vaccinations. So measuring your campaign is very important. Uh, planning the fulfillment. You know, if imagine we had countrywide uh, vaccination campaign and then two days down the line the vaccinations were all over so that's not fulfillment right that means that you're running a campaign to 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 fail that's not a fulfillment at all you've got to be available to fulfill your campaign right so make sure that you've got enough product because when you're running the product there's going to be lots of inquiries and this then there are chances of course of your, you know, your forecast was X number of uh, products that you'd like to sell, or you know, number of people you'd like to come and 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 you know get your your product or your service, or for example, this vaccine. So you have to have your fulfillment in place. You can't go to a place and say, "Oh, I'm so sorry, today it's over." Then why are you running the campaign, right? And of course, continually test and improve. Testing and improving is such an important part. So the reasons why we put the MPS in here, and I, I know we've already talked about it, but can you see how, um, like, and I know Joe had to, talked about it earlier as well, green, uh, even children apparently are, are associating green with MPESA, right? So green has become embedded into our mind, right? And uh, I mean, and uh, maybe another thing right now is, is, is running is what kind of taxi are you, are you, are you uh, um, going for? Or what kind of toothpaste? Are you, are you buying Colgate or Aquafresh? Or, you know, so you're not even saying toothpaste anymore, you're saying that Colgate were Aquafresh, right? So, um, so, so something has to stick in your mind. So you've got to keep continuously improving it. And remember that once you've done the campaign and you say, oh, I say I got myself, that's done. 
I'm sorry, that's that's not that's not enough. You've got to carry on and be consistent. So even if you're doing online uh, campaigns or on on social media, you've got to be consistent on your ads because the first three to six months actually will be just brand awareness. Then after that, you'll start getting your inquiries because you're being consistent about something and you're actually appealing to your target audience. So keep it consistent. Okay, so I'm gonna run this uh, video. Uh, we found this super exciting and we wanna share this with you. Again, it was part of a campaign. So let me play it. I hope everyone can see it and hear. Extra mile for you. Great. So I hope you were able to see that video. So again, I'm going to ask, what did you get from that video? You can either write it in the chat or you can like unmute yourself and tell me. Uh, Your thoughts, what that video made you feel and what do you think Total was trying to get out of it? I want to hear from uh, Mary Nene. You sounded quite. Uh, um... <laughs> Go on then. Tell us. Tell us what you thought about that video. Don't feel shy. Yes, Joe. I like that answer. Brand actually cares about the things that are important to me. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Go on I'm then, Mary. Myself. Total is uh, willing to go um, out of their way to, uh, to, to, to support their clients. Um, yeah, you, you can. Step, yeah, it's, um, you see, they are doing something extraordinary to, to make their clients happy. <laughs> Sorry. Absolutely, Mary, absolutely. Thanks for sharing. Love it, love it. <laughs> Total no, you know, knows their audience. Yeah, and you know it. It actually shows, and you saw the feeling in it, right? You saw the feeling in it. You saw how the guy was, you know, in between his work, he's still trying to sort that wall out, and you don't know what he's doing there. Is he going to do some painting or something like that? You know, um, and then you know because there was a World Cup happening, and he said, "No, you know, I want people to still enjoy themselves." So you know. Um, yeah, so this is this is again quite generic as well, if you will. Um, again, another question: Who do you think this uh, this uh, ad was targeted to? Who is this ad targeted to? There's a target audience in here. Who is the target Soka audience? Fan? Soccer fans, okay, Soccer. sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who else? Someone else can go as well. Vehicle owners, yeah, kind of. Kind of, I mean, of course, you know, they want people to be there. The family, okay. But there's, there's, there's very specific kind of people in this uh, ad. So who do you think that was, um, fo you know, focusing on? Maybe in general. Feels like they go the extra mile. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> it was. There was a lady who was showing a baby's picture, and he was 
he was cringing, wasn't he? He was like, uh huh, okay. Thanks for that. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this information, but thank you. <laughs> There's a hard working family man, yeah. But can you see there was no other, they were all African. That's the other thing I wanted to show you, right? They were very, very um, focused on, like this, this is not an ad that they will actually, yes, Afri Africanicity, exactly. You know, th this, is, this is what Africans are all about. They're about hospitality. They're about caring community. for people, community, you know? So this is the kind of thing that they were saying that Africans are and Africans for. Right, mm -hmm. so um, this is not an ad they, for example, will show in Europe, right? So be very specific about like what kind of imagery you're using or people you're using um, for your campaigns, yeah. who are you targeting, which yeah. is what we're saying again, you know, when we went back to Corp, um, we had the lady in there, but I'm just thinking even as a parent, if I had seen an image of a, a child happy with somebody, you know, putting money in a piggy bank into that uh, the elephant thing, um, it would it would create some sort of emotion in me. So, are you creating yes. that emotion in somebody? So, yes. this created that emotion in us, right? Yes. So, remember, campaigns are around about making people, um, and videos are great. By the way, videos are the most powerful tool right now. The trending behavior is you will actually maybe, you know, not download an a, 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 a image, but you will actually want to watch the video. Yep. Especially if even the first few seconds are captivating, you want to watch the entire video, yep. right? So video marketing is actually a very powerful tool at the moment. Yep. Um, one of the other things you want to think about when you're even doing Instagram, social media, anything like that you're doing, the think video. Uh, video, think video. Yeah, absolutely. Moving on. So All campaign right. tips to follow, right? Um, yeah. I'll just do the first. Oh no, sorry, Eunice, you're you're doing this one. Oh, I think you are. Okay. All right, Sawa. So let me just carry on with this. So we've got in preparation for your campaign, during campaign, and after the campaign is over, what to do? Okay. Again, we're not gonna go through all the bits and pieces. You, like I said, we're giving you a resource around this on all the different steps to follow. So um, one of the first things you probably wanna do during a campaign when you're preparing for, for a campaign is to understand, of course, remember the, the, the target audience, what kind of objective you wanna set, to so set your objectives, what do you wanna achieve? You know, So you, you outline your key metrics and KPIs in there. Um, you create a plan and a budget, all right? So created a plan and a budget. What kind of uh, channels you wanna go through? Do you wanna do online and offline? Do you wanna do only online? Uh, what will you be communicating? You know, what is your strategy around it? What, what's the communication about it? Um, get your approvals for, so if you're working in a corporate, get your approvals from your um, uh, superiors. So if it's your manager or your CEO, um, so that this is my plan, uh, you know, for example, I'm planning on doing posters and flyers at malls. I want to do a banner, a couple of street banners as well. I want to do, ex, um, uh, on, I want to do Instagram uh, campaign. So this is how much it's going to be. I want to do, run a YouTube ad. I want to do some display ads, you know, so this is how much it's going to cost. And then my timeline is going to be, I want to run it between four, four weeks and six weeks. So it's say four to six weeks. You know, so I want to start on, for example, 1st of September, and I want to run it until the end of September. So what are all those information that you'd like to do? So all that is part of your planning of the campaign, right? Once you've got an approval, whether it's yourself, like I said, like Eunice said, you know, sometimes you're doing this for yourself as an entrepreneur. So even then you need to ask yourself those questions, right? Um, am I okay with this? Am I running it for four weeks? Is it okay? Should I run it for longer? So all of these questions that you ask yourself. And once you've made your approvals, now you start preparing the artworks. You create your uh, artworks for all the different um, materials that you're gonna be doing this for. Um, so if you're working with a graphics designer, please keep a lead time because there'll be black back and forth. 
maybe the the you know image is not right maybe the words are not right maybe the words you gave him and it doesn't sound quite right when it comes out on an artwork you know so give a bit, a bit of lead, lead way on that while the approvals of the while the artworks are going on you want to also get quotations so for example you want um Adi marketing or my biz marketer to run your marketing campaign get your quotations uh from us so that you can be able to you know sort of uh Put those in place and create your orders right so again a lot of corporates and where i used to work before we used to do lpos or uh, local purchase orders so we'd run those orders um, directly from there so even if you've done your uh, planning and budgeting but if some of those things are not in place then you have to like tweak things around and say okay fine you know what how do we work this um, into the budget for example and that could be adding something and deleting something as well. So keep that in mind. Campaigns have to be a bit dynamic. Um, you can't always be very restrictive on it so long as you know where your target audience is. So for example, the reasons why I would love to do an Instagram um, campaign or I would love to do a TikTok campaign is because that's where my clients are, right? My youth, my young people are in TikTok. So I want to, I want to do a campaign in there. All right, so if you want to do maybe um, a much broader category of people, you find that a lot of the youngsters are not on Facebook, but they're on Instagram, so you'd rather do something there. Um, if it's something to do with people who are, um, and, and right now it's a little bit restrictive and difficult, you know, and you have something to do with uh, something that goes really well with um, alcohol. Then you want to do or run um, campaigns within a bar, for example, you know, or a restaurant or restaurants or places where these your clients will be. So think about that. Um, you ensure that all your artworks are well in advance, again, uh, ready, uh, approved. Uh, so keep that lead time as well for your approval times. Uh, maybe another, you know, few days, for example, sometimes approvals are much quicker and you're good to go, but other times they're not. Um, you also want to have like what we call proofs. So if you're doing flyers or posters or something that's print uh, for printing, you, you need what a proof is, is that a printer will give you that this is what approximately your artwork would look like. Is it the right colors? Um, is it the right uh, layout? Is it cutting off on the edges? Is it too close to the edges, for example? So all of these, again, you keep you keep a little bit of lead time on that. Um, have your prints ready at least about a week, I would say week to two weeks advance before your campaign starts, because you also want to distribute it, right? And especially if you're doing a countrywide uh, campaign, you won't have enough time to make sure that all of those items are distributed in the in, in the right time as well. So your, your distributors are not getting it on the same day the campaign is starting or when the campaign is already started, right? So you've got to again, have some good lead time on that. Um, that's for all the print works that you're, you're sending out. Um, it could be your retail outlets, it could be distributors, it could be whichever places that you're thinking about having those things on, like even if it's a billboard, and if you think a billboard is going to help you out, you know, to create that brand awareness or to create the awareness for the campaign, then what areas that you'd like to put them up? Um, already you made your plan around it, and then make sure that they're up before the campaign starts or just before the campaign starts, right? So that's really important to to note. Um, newspapers, magazines, as newspaper, I mean, you can give a, somebody today and tomorrow it'll be in the newspaper as so long as the um, you pay enough and, you know, newspaper ads are not cheap, um, especially like a quarter paid ad. A quarter paid ad right now, I think maybe is around about, what, 150,000 shillings? 130, 150,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And that's in a prominent, maybe the, not even on the first, second pages, maybe it could be in the sixth or seventh page as well, right, in the newspaper. But magazines could even be much more difficult because magazines, for example, will run maybe once in a month, depending on what magazine it is. So if you want an ad in a magazine, like for parents magazine, for example, then you got to make sure that you even have longer lead time on that so that it runs exactly at the time that you want the campaign to run, like, for example, September. And then if they're going for print now, then you have to have uh, given them the artwork by that time. Productions on uh, your TVCs, your radios, you can see we've actually tried to 
you know, sort of do the whole spectrum of this and not just online. So you've got your, your both online and offline um, the campaign ready space, if you will. So even your radios, for example, making sure that the scripts are ready in good time and uh, the production, again, if there's a back and forth on production, you make sure that that's um, within the spaces that you have before the campaign starts, okay? During the campaign, okay? So running the campaign, of course, it's like boom, but you've got to make sure that your teams know what you're running. Communication is really, really key, important. You could be doing all of this and your team doesn't even know that you're gonna be running a campaign and what the campaign is about and what your objectives are. So you've got to make sure that you communicate internally even before you run the campaign, okay? Um, very crucial, very important. It's encouraged even that um, you tell your staff to share this uh, campaign with other people within their networks as well. Great way of actually having some loyalty around um, running your campaigns. Um, sending out SMSs and emails to your customer database. Remember, if you're not collecting uh, customer information right now for your already existing customers, please do, because that's an important space for you to communicate again to your existing customers or potential customers that are in your database that this is what you're running. Okay, so SMSs and emails are a great way of actually getting to inform them. Um, ensuring that on your social media posts, you know, you're changing the headers, not just the posts, but the header as well. You need to change that in, in whichever social media pages there are. Creating the landing page. So landing page is your website. Um, so the one page that you have for the campaign itself. So it could be something like um, uh, rdmarketing.com slash special campaign or rdmarketing.com slash COVID campaign, whatever that is, you know. So on that, uh, that, that's the place where when people click on online, that's the page that they would go to. That's what we call the landing page. And it has enough content and information for a client to uh, be able to absorb and then call to action. Remember the call to action in there has to be there as well, okay? Um, ensuring your customer, uh, customer service representatives are also ready. Remember we were saying that we don't work in a silo. We've got to make sure that we're working together sales, customer service, all of those people have to work together to make sure that the campaign is running smoothly and they're giving you feedback on what customers are saying so that you can start tweaking around the campaign, especially if it's online, you can start tweaking around the campaign around that. All right, um, monitoring is super important as well. If you're actually doing some monitor, if you're having newspaper ads or you know, you've got a, a you know, RD marketing doing or my biz marketer doing your campaign, you want to see that it's going okay. Is it exactly the way you'd like it to do it? Um, did the malls put up the posters that you'd liked? Did the people on the on the street actually give the flyers to the right people as well? You know, so all of that monitoring has to be there. Um, do some social listening. What are other people saying about your campaign? Do they like it? Do they not like it? What are they saying about it? You know, um, if you're running any events, you know, to like, for example, uh, launch the campaign, what are you doing about that? All right. Um, have you got the right people to come in for the campaign? In fact, that on event on its own, of course, is like a separate thing because that's quite big. You've got to probably if you're doing a media event, you need to invite the media in good time, um, send out the invitations to your your customers that you want them to come for the event, your managers who would like to come for the event as well. Um, mall activations, you have the mall, have you paid for it? Have you got all the artworks and, you know, so your banners and everything ready? Um, are, you, are you good to go live? You know, people like to do an IG live, for example, as there are, rec as there are more recent um, or launch events, for example. So is that running okay? So there's so many different things that you need to do during the campaign. Um, testing, again, I'm gonna say that A-B testing, carry on A-B testing and seeing what is the perfect thing to do. If you are running campaigns where you have promotional items, um, set up a reorder level for that, right? So for example, if you're saying that, hey, you know what, if you buy um, X number of books, I'm gonna throw in a pen. So the promotional item is the pen as well. So apart from the fact that you have the books, make sure that the pens are available as well, right? So um, like I said, it's, it's the fulfillment. You've got to fulfill your campaign, right? 
So that's just a bit about, of course, you can read this on your own as well um, when we send it out to you. Yep. Okay. Uh, so after the campaign is the fun bit and sometimes some depressing bits. Uh, it's the evaluating the metrics and your KPIs. Did it work? Did it not work? Um, so evaluate those, see how what to improve on and what to, you know, to keep repeating because it worked, right? It brought your customers, it brought your awareness, people are recognizing your brand, people are talking to you on Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram. And in fact, when you look at your analytics on your website, people are going directly to your site. It's not searching, it's typing www.mybizmarketer.co.ke because they know it offhand. Right. Um, some things you're going to do if they had something in your signature, in your email signature with the offer. Now you're updating that offer, removing it and replacing it. And you're updating your landing pages because some of it are not evergreen, meaning that they've got dates on it. So you have to update those. Um, updating your materials, you had brochures postcards, some giveaway stuff, you're updating all that. Um, billboard stuff, of course, billboards, because you're paying by the month, you, you've got to update those and or remove those so that you're not paying beyond what you had agreed on. Um, so you reconcile everything, pull everything together, do a report, put it in together. If it is yourself, you pull yourself together and look, review everything. Rinse and repeat what is possible, what was good, what worked, and you know, go ahead and see if you can repeat, if you've got the budget to repeat what worked and add some new stuff, right? Um, if you need to do more brand awareness work, do some more brand awareness work, um, it actually is cheaper than customer acquisition work. And that also may lead to customer acquisition. And so with this plan, and, and Rima said, we'll, we'll give you the template. You can use this over and over and over again, keep the good bits to, so that you're repeating those. And the reason you have to keep the metrics and KPIs is so that you're able to maintain the what works and keep doing that. Um, if you're if you're able to do the focus groups and review imagery, voiceovers, uh, testing out this voice, feminine voice versus masculine voice, uh, feminine image versus masculine image, uh, you know, uh, colors versus you know this color versus that color, do that. It's a good investment because uh, we will discuss those options. And I think Rima brought up the point of green, has, Safaricom has taken over the green color, right? Um, you know, there's certain colors around the world that are reminiscent of certain brands. Um, red goes with all the fast food companies, the Burger Kings, the McDonald's of the reds and yellows. So you may want to consider what colors you're using to uh, advertise your brand. I, I remember when Absa changed, Absa is Buckles Bank International, they changed their bank, their colors to red. We're not used to a bank having red as a color. So I, the minute I saw it, I felt like that was ketchup and or uh, put a tomato sauce for me. So I, I didn't see that connecting to a bank. It's, mm, it still doesn't sit right with me. So think about those, right? Um, most, most hospitals brand colors are blues and greens. So think about your brand identity and then what ads you do, what your color associates with, right? So We've got to discuss the ads you see in front of you. Tell me, which beverage would you be buying from here? I'm selling two. The one on top and the one below. Which one are you buying? You can see, you can write it on the chat there. Mary. Coca -Cola. What are you drinking? You're drinking Coca-Cola. Yes. Why? Why are you drinking Coca-Cola? Because I'm attracted to the colors. <laughs> the the right colors. Color. It's a like it's the right color. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Who else want to tell us? 
what are they going to buy from me over here on my drinks that I'm selling? Come on, people, buy a drink. <laughs> Joe's saying buying what? Buying Coke. Charles is water. <laughs> Coke. Paul is Coke. What of a life. <laughs> what is life? Yeah. But okay, so here's the other thing, right? Um, mm -hmm. If I were if I were to change the guy, Coke. the Coke, Coke there. And then put mm -hmm. a water bottle there, do you think you'd still, you still say the same thing? If the young man there drinking the Coke was drinking water, would you buy the water? <laughs> no. <laughs> Emma says I'm yes. <laughs> Joe says both ads make me thirsty. Linda Linda's says no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, Linda, I'm not even a Coke fan, but I'm buying the Coke. Look at how, look at his face. He looks like he's thoroughly enjoying that Coke, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm even thirsty looking at him drink that Coke. Benina wants to marry the guy. <laughs> <laughs> you see the emotion that ad evokes in some of us is what your ad should evoke. People connect immediately. And then there are others who the crispness of the water presented because you're, you're, you want that crisp clean, clear uh, looking water, you know, because you, you, you don't want dirty, mucky looking water. You want that looks nice and cold and crisp. You want to drink that water. That's what you're going for, right? I don't even think they need to put award winning water because I don't know which water wins an award. But yeah, the water is nice and crisp and cold or cool and you want to drink that when you're thirsty. Then that's the emotion it invokes. So think when you put in your ad, does it connect with that audience? Is it saying, oh, here's my money. Take my money, please. Yeah. Right? That's definitely. I think for, for sure, it's the emotions anything evokes. Yes. So when you're doing your campaign, what emotion are you evoking yeah. in your clients, in your customer yeah. target audience? That's what you're yeah. looking for. If it's somebody who is an avid Coke drinker, Honest to God, as soon as he sees that, he will just oh, like, he, I feel he, like a uh, straight now. to the kiosk, now, now, to the now, shop. Now. Yes, yeah, exactly. I need that. Yeah, pretty um, much. So, you know, and then the other thing I think I want to pull, pull out, uh, point out in here is the minimalistic um, approach that they used for this ad. You can see they had, they have three, three lines, share, yeah. Coke, share a feeling. feeling. So then Coke and That's feeling it. is what's, uh, you know, brought out. Yep. There's a hashtag in there, and yep. then the brand logo, period. Yep. And, and then else is shown by the image. Yes. And then it's about us, the audience, not about them. But if you look at the water award winning, it's about the people, the, the the brand, the company. It's not about the audience. The Coke is share Coke, share feeling. It's about us. So when you make it about the audience, not about yourself, you're making the customer a hero, then the customer says, oh, it's about me. They care about me, right? So they could, they, they're they like, this is this is the company for me. They're not talking about themselves. It's not about us. It, it's, you know, they're not talking about the company. They're talking about us, me, the customer. So you, you always make it about the customer. Make the customer the hero. And here's the other thing. Imagine if, Coke had this amazing ad, again, very minimalistic and everything like that. But when they went to the nearest kiosk, they couldn't find a Coke. When a client couldn't find a Coke. Again, fulfillment question mark. But you can see that Coke does a really good job to make sure that their distribution is all the way to the smallest rural kiosk. In possible. Possible. Absolutely. You know, so you know, when you're thinking about your distribution networks as well, please think about that. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're doing a global um, campaign, making sure that you, you can fulfill your global campaign as well, whether it's um, 
online delivery, uh, you know, the time it takes for delivery to be done, you know, so anything that you're saying, making sure that the fulfillment is in there as well, right? So yeah. I think that's what uh, I wanted to just sort of pull in there as well. But thanks, guys, for, you know, your yes. input in this. This is really Thank great. Thank you. And yeah. I'm hoping that, you know, you're learning from this as well. Actually, maybe, um, maybe we can take a couple of those questions as well. There's a couple of questions that I did see. Okay, go ahead. So we have um, Reggie Sylvia. She asked, what if you have a target target have to target parents where you where will you target them? Which channel will you use? Okay. Um, parents, depending on what age they are at as well. So are you looking at much younger um, adults or, or or older ones, you know? Um, it really would yep. depend on that. A lot of times, if there's a little bit of an older generation, then Facebook is great. If it's a younger yep. generation, Instagram works great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Instagram works great. So, so digitally, yeah, you're looking at those two channels. And then if it's outdoors, remember, then you're looking at you're, you're looking at the locales where the parents are likely to co co congregate uh, outside schools, outside church. Anywhere there's kid activities where parents are likely to be at. So that's where you'd likely to find them. You're dropping flyers or postcards or something in writing, uh, handing out right outside schools, right outside um, church. You're likely to get parents there. Actually, one of the places I would think about where, again, what kind of, uh, 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 you know, sort of, uh, income bracket are you looking at yeah but a lot of times in and around the malls are great because you yep. see during weekends especially parents are taking them to the malls yep. so then That's you can be around that area as well all right so, so think about it in that way when you're understanding your demographics what are the pain points what are some of the things that they would do where would they actually go do what it. would they go so those are some exactly of the pieces um, Joe, I know you sent me this uh, and I'm going to read it out. What time would you advise is proper lead time for media during events campaigns? Um, two to three weeks, question mark. So I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of interpreting this question more than anything. You're saying that if you're running a campaign, how much lead time would you give to a media um, to make sure that they can put it online? Am I, am I, am I getting it right to your question? Okay, Joe. Great. So, if they're run, if they are actually, if you give them the artwork, so there's two ways of doing this. One is that your ad, uh, the camp, the people who are running your or, or doing your artworks, are they doing the video or the image? If they are, then you just if you give them enough, like maybe about a week, sometimes even a few days, so long as you have the budgets. Um, if you give them enough time you'll be able to get some good uh, negotiation powers and you know you don't have to pay the premium prizes for example so if you give them at least 4 weeks in advance you get some good offers from the media houses um, so even if your artwork is not ready making sure that you do your um, your negotiations at least 4 to 6 weeks in advance is very helpful um, and then if they're doing your artworks as media house then again, that four to six weeks will be perfect because once you've actually um, nailed down the pricing and the offer from them for you, then they can start working on it and then you can do a bit of back and forth. I find that within two weeks, uh, it's okay. Anything less than that, it's, you're not quite happy with what output has been, has been brought out um, for your target audience. So yeah, giving it about four to six weeks is, is generally about the right time. Um, if you have a creative agency who's already doing that, again, I would still use about the same time. But uh, give, give yourself some negotiation time with the media houses. All right. Yep. Great. All right. Okay. It, 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 okay. Right. Is it, so okay, again, is it, any, yeah, is it anybody who's bought, uh, who knows what this product is? has purchased this product, has tried this product, show of hands, <laughs> has seen this product, show of hands.
or you can say yes or no on the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Linda, awesome. Oh, Mary, yes, you've tried it? Paul says no. Okay. Oh, William has tried it. Okay. Is it were William, you amazed? Like premium? Were you amazed? <laughs> yes. William. No, not yet, never bought it before, but I know it's a maze flower, Linda. Okay, great. Yes, maize flower. Why do we have to explain that it's a maize flower? <laughs> That's my thing. William says it's a great product. Okay. okay, great. Good to know. Does it taste How like it costs? <laughs> Is it expensive? Like normally, what, what would people buy? Would they buy like jogo um, or soko? I know there's two of them that uh, in the house we purchase. You say soko. soko. Yeah, yeah. Preferred jogo. Mary says preferred jogo. Okay. So if I'm people are always fan. buying soko or jogo, would you, after, you, after seeing this billboard, consider buying a maze? Mm-hmm. No. Well, no. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not really. Oh, wow. Okay. So now I want to know why you would still not buy this. Funny thing, I've tried it once, but when it was introduced because it was an offer, after that, the price was not equivalent to quality. Hmm. Ooh. Okay. Good to know that. Good to know. Again, this is what I'm talking about in terms of, uh, you know, like the feedback, you know, customer reviews about a particular yeah. product. It is so important yeah. to get this kind of information. Now, William, imagine if that information was actually provided to Amaze themselves when they were actually running the campaign. Wouldn't that be a way for them to know that, okay, fine, we need to improve it. Where do we need to improve this product at? You know, how do, how do we create it even better for your for our clients, you know. Um, Joe doesn't think that's yeah. the right target audience. And and then is it the right image for the right product? Um, choice well, choice of color. Um, I, I think our brands are getting, going wrong with colors. Remember the Bitco color issue with blue band and sunlight and all that. So. I th and I think they're doing this purposely to get us to have conversations so they get mileage of for their products, get more people talking about them so that people go to the supermarket and actually try their products. <laughs> Joe thought it was a lipstick at first, and Aisha thinks it's a tar they're targeting the youth. <laughs> You're probably right. You're probably right on that, you know. Um, because it's that green lipstick thing, you know, that's happening. Yeah, yeah but also think but if it, product. Well, when I think if it's the youth and my budget is for my lipstick, I'm not buying them amazed. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Anyway, so these, um, are, these are some of the things we wanted to, again, bring out for you because you want to understand your target audience. So remember, yes. yeah. um, we're, we're discussing this and we're saying, no, even if after I see this, I will not uh, buy it uh, or yeah. I've bought it, but I didn't feel the yeah. quality and price was the same after the offer was over. You know, yeah. So those are some of the things that you need to think about even when you're running this ad for your customer. Remember, you're not running the ad for yourself. You don't put this, the, the artwork, the image, yeah. The color yeah. that you like yeah think about your target audience you need to think about them so, yeah just let me premise this with saying Rima and I don't know who their targeting are the target audience are we just we're kind of like focus grouping it right now we with you guys going what do you think what would you pick this person to be the person that represent their brand would you would you have 
done the campaign this way. We might, I wouldn't probably done it this way. We could be wrong, but we'll see how it goes, right? Yeah, absolutely. Again, the other thing that you probably want to do is once these guys have run a campaign, something similar to this, um, some of the, the, you know, like metrics would be, uh, you know, if they run a, camp, uh, run a brand awareness, mm -hmm. how many more people got to know about this, this brand or not? So yes. it was it's creating a brand awareness. Um, has a brand awareness been created? Yes. Um, are there more people who are now uh, associating mm -hmm. themselves with this? Exactly. Was there an increase in sales mm -hmm. and where their increase the in, in sales was? So for example, yes. if all the supermarkets, Kids. which which branches uh, did, did better than which other ones, right? Yes. So again, those are metrics that you want to create around your campaigns as well. Exactly. Okay. okay. So we move on. So let me talk to you guys about message design, like we've just talked about on that ad and why it's important. So you got to think about the content that is the rational, the emotional, like we're talking about Coke, Coke invoking the emotion in us of, my God, when I'm thirsty, I just want that Coke drink because I saw that guy, that guy looked like his thirst was just being fixed right there with that Coke, right? So, you know, there's the COVID um, vaccine and that's a moral appeal to everybody get the COVID vaccine. So think about the, what your appeal is about, the theme, the idea, the unique value proposition you are trying to put through. All right. Next slide, Prima. <clears throat> this, the structure, one-sided, two-sided. Are you trying to evoke an argument or you had two sides? One side likes it, the other side doesn't. So you, you cause a, a conversation. Remember the Bitco, um, uh, Blue band and, uh, and and I think it was sunlight and whatever. It caused people to talk. That was conversation, and you could try and that and that could backfire. So you want to be very careful how you craft it. Another one would be uh, in the safari com and and in Airtel they have this little beef thing going on. It's the, both corporations know what they're doing, right? The apple versus the grapes, and it's a two sided argument of who's the better, whatever, you, you, you could do one, which is an internal in your brand, but you're causing people to have a conversation about things. So think about how you could structure it to either trigger a, a conversation or push uh, um, an, a, uh, an idea through so that it gets people thinking uh, and go, hmm, I hadn't thought about that. I'm trying to think of an example and it's not coming to me and I had one, it's slipping. If I remember it, I'll come back to it. All right, format. Remember when I talked about the uh, cooperative banks format, why the print didn't work and but video, if they had done it, might have worked. This is what I'm talking about. Graphics, visual, headlines and copy uh, will work one way while well, might not work the other way. So think about how you're applying your graphicals and your visuals in, 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 in different media, right? So, and then sound effects. Sometimes you see um, commercials having certain uh, background audio, they could have classical music or jazz or whatever. They, they, that has an effect, you have no idea. It could be something to calm or to, to bring attention to, to bring forward your, to, to your mind that, you know, if you are not paying attention, all of a sudden you have gung and you're like, oh, that forces you to pay attention. And then there's a serene sign of maybe horror like music, it forces you to continue playing, to continue paying attention because we are now totally tuning out ads, right? So everything has a reason why it's there. So those formats are in there to make things uh, keep our attention. Shape, sense, and all that, uh, to, depending on where you're at. So scent would probably be if you're at an event, you're trying to get people to come and experience something. So for so think about all those things. Next slide. Source, um, you are the source. And if you don't have trust, you're trying to build it. So think about where you can go to borrow trust. So partnering with bigger brands gives you trust. 
or if you can't be pulled like ability, do things that builds you, gives you like ability, be fun, be quirky, be interesting, uh, be playful, so that then people or your or your tribe that is your audience is beginning begins to connect with you. Uh, if you're an expert, then you bring your expert A game to, to the to the forefront. All right. Next slide. Sorry, before we even go in there, I want to send in another question out actually is so some people in here said and we've got some campaign gurus in here. Um, how easy was it to create the marketing campaign that you did? Right, so I want to know, like, was it easy for you? Was it manageable? Was it very difficult? Ooh, piece of cake. Wow. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Manageable. But sometimes it's actually like, you know, people find it like, oh, okay, that's fine. Let's just run a campaign and that's, that, that's uh, you know, let's get, create the brand awareness. Let's create the ROI. Mm -hmm. Then sometimes you get so many challenges. There are lots of challenges. So you've got to keep that in mind, yeah. you know, when you're running a campaign. So, and it's okay to have those challenges. You just have to wait, find a way of actually um, sort of coming across them as well, right? So this is great. I think the multi-layered and multi-channeled uh, campaigns get to be a little complicated and, and follow through. It's when you don't have team and budget, get very, very crazy. Yeah. So we've got a whole bunch of people who said, but manageable, we've got, one difficult we've had one piece of cake we need to know who this piece of cake one is <laughs> yes yes they need to be on this panel man yeah and then last poll um for now is when are you planning to run a marketing campaign in this information are you going to use this to start a campaign in the next 30 days or are you going to run something for maybe you know, towards the end of the year, you're doing, you're planning on doing a Christmas campaign or something like that. So that will be the next maybe 90 days or something of that sort. Normally Christmas campaigns start around about November or mid-November, by the way. Christmas that's campaign never starts on Christmas day. But let me tell you, that's a kind of thing. Everybody else has already started planning their Christmas campaigns. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You already started running the campaigns, yeah. Yeah, they, they saying, started right? working. They've collected collaterals. They're do, doing design work and all that good stuff, doing their customer journey stuff. Yeah, not leaving anything to chance. Awesome. The next 90 days, awesome, awesome. And, and some of us should be even thinking about 2022, you know, because elections are next year. So we should be planning to not be defensive, but to go on the offense because of elections. What are we going to do? Yeah. Awesome, guys. Great. So a lot yeah. of us in the next 30 days and then 60 days. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Lovely. Fantastic. It's good to know. It's good to know. Oh, I want to campaigns, by the way. Yeah, I got to say this. We do have a WhatsApp group that you guys could join. And if you, during this time when you're doing your campaigns, you want to hop in the WhatsApp group and ask questions. Hey, I'm in the between. I'm in the campaign and this and this is this not working. What do I do? That would be a group to jump into. Yeah. And ask, yeah, and ask questions. Um, yeah. So I'm stuck the, here. What do I do? Yeah. They'll be able to, if you're interested, they'll be able to, join. you know, send you the link to join in. Yeah. yeah. All right, of course. So quickly running through this, um, what are some of your stakeholders? Of course, your web guy um, to do your landing page, your copywriter or the content developer um, for coming up with a copywriting for your, info, for your campaign, your sales and marketing teams. They're so key. They're, they're experts. You want to get information from there. And of course, your business owner, who's the major stakeholder um, yeah. for running this. Yeah. Um, so many different metrics, key uh, marketing metrics. There's so, so many, as you can see on the left hand side. Um, but some of the things, of course, you want to focus on is your ROI, your lead generation, 
uh, even if it's an intent to purchase. So your inquiries also are a really important part and how many people are engaging with you um, on these campaigns is also crit critical. Sometimes we even don't look at number of people who've liked the post, for example, we look at number of people who have um, uh, like viewed it, you know, so the views are even more important than even the likes that are there. Okay, so there's tons of key metrics in here. Again, you can always look into these. Um, depends on what kind of um, campaign you're running. Um, uh, this is a simple match metric. Um, again, you have a dashboard full of all the information that you have. What was your bounce rate? Number of people who viewed this. Eunice, uh, you want to take them through quickly on this? Yeah, so this is more of the digital space. So this is what the data you're collecting in the digital space. And so this is not exhaustive. So you can see like a MailChimp email list performance and your social media followers and your, you know, your revenue growth rate. Um, they, you, you know, hopefully you're earning that million dollars there per month. Uh, fingers crossed, no code would we do that. Um, your AdWord campaigns and all that good stuff. So this is not exhaustive. There could be other uh, data you could be pulling from other applications you're pulling. So are you using? So make sure you're pulling everything. And if you're familiar with a tool called Data Studio, you can use that. It's Google's to, uh, tool and it's free. Go use that to pull all this data in so you can see how you're doing. Um, so other tools you can use is Excel to capture the other offline uh, stuff that you're doing that is not, you know, it's not part of a tool that you're using. So the number of phone calls you guys are making and uh, of conversations you're having and or trying to uh, bring back customers that you probably have lost and you're trying to win them back. So those, you know, put them in Excel and export that to Data Studio, and then it comes into these nice little beautiful graphics that you can now do a nice report to if it's your the business owner or for yourself to the month of a month, you're doing this nice report and it does a good bit build, to build your soul up to see what you're doing progress each month. It, it builds up your spirit and gets you going so that you're able to do your campaigns month of a month. Yep. Next, next slide. So there's some formulas you should be aware of, um, and these formulas help you figure out how you're doing. So customer lifetime value is one so that you know how much this customer costs you to keep them on a lifetime. So that is, um, you know, you, 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 the, the formula you use to uh, calculate um, the value of a customer. So how much did it cost to, to bring that customer in? So for example, it cost you 100 bob. Uh, we can use 100 bob and then how long does that customer last uh, stay with you and that to multiply by that how many years or months does this stay that's that lifetime value that so that's when so people ask you especially startups if an investor asks you what's your customer lifetime value that's how you calculate that the aov is number of orders times uh the revenue that's how you calculate uh, uh, average order value um, then the uh, the order value in by uh, divided by PF is the order value divided by your uh, unique customers. So these are you guys. You can copy this or take a picture of this and keep that, and then you can start calculating that every uh, every three months. So then you can see what the difference is within your business, and especially if you're an e-commerce and or selling products like, uh, uh, for example, young lady with uh, cakes and uh, snacks, this will be important so that you know uh, your average order value versus revenue and all that good stuff. Uh, customer retention rate, uh, good to know how many customers you're keeping and how many customers you're losing over time. So that when that's the retention rate goes up, you know there's a problem with the business. So you, you start to figure out where that problem is. Is it in customer service? Is it in our processes? Is it in uh, or what our unique value proposition is that we're telling people? And then when they join us, they come and buy from us, they find out uh, these guys aren't this is not what they promised the pre promised us they're delivering something totally different so figure out it helps you figure out uh, 
um, what the to help you to figure out you're having problems. So keep calculating that, and I will do so every three months so that if it starts to spike up, you're seeing an increase in that retention rate, then you know that we're losing customers a month over month. Then it's time to figure out what's going wrong. All right. Uh, Take right. a snapshot, yeah. Take a snapshot of that, and uh, I mean, there's and, no growth in a business if you keep yeah. losing your customers, customers and exactly not retaining them, right? So yeah. you want to get new customers, but you also yeah. want to retain your customers, and yeah. that's what growth is all about, right? So, so they're coming in and leaving, yeah. leaving. So now you're almost flatlining. Yeah, you're flatlining. So it means then, and it's also they say that, I mean, part of the calculations and formulas is. Um, calculating how much it takes to to uh, gain a new customer, how much mm. you have to spend to get a new customer. It's always cust expensive to yeah. get a new customer versus to retain a customer and to get more business from the existing customer as well. Actually, I'm missing the customer acquisition cost calculator. I will add that. To, I'll add it, and we, we can send it out on via email. Okay, so you can good. have that. Mm -hmm. Again, some of the tools uh, for you know technology-wise that we can be able to use, um, you know, for your campaigns is your CRMs. Um, so from directly from your landing page on WordPress that you create a website, um, you can be able to then connect it through an API. Uh, so API integrations into your CRM. Google Analytics is very important to know how are people actually interacting with your website. Uh, Google Search Console, so you know what kind of searches people are doing to actually get to your business or, or similar. Um, of course, emails like uh, MailChimp or SendMail, SMSs. Um, if you have to have a chatbot, do something like Toplift on your, web, on your website so, you, so your clients can directly you know, chat with you from the website. Of course, there's Drift and Twilio, again, similarly for SMSs. Um, Canva is great, especially when you want to do your planning around um, like your ad, sorry, your, um, if you don't, if you're not a very, if you don't want to have a graphics person doing something for you, Canva has great templates that you can use. Airtable is what I was saying is great for uh, planning the entire campaign. You can do your UTMs in there. You can um, sort of have your content created in there as well. So some really great tools around here again. Um, again, you can do a snapshot of this. We'll e either way be sharing this and you guys can you know, sort of look into it a little bit more in terms of what kind of technologies you can be able to use for your campaigns, especially um, for online ones as well, right? Um, we've got two free resources for you. One is the marketing campaign steps to follow that we'd actually taken you through. And we've got the marketing business plan template um, which you can actually do from January all the way to December. You can put your events and communications and all of the information, and then it gives you a tally of where the budget is. You put the budget and you'll be able to see the grand budget at the bottom as well. Some great tools for you to be able to use. We love using that um, for our campaigns as well. Um, so yeah, so those are the two free campaigns. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, guys. Uh, I would love to hear. So this is Eunice's uh, review page, and this is my review page. Uh, as RD, um, it's a it's a QR code, so you can actually take your phone and just you know scan it and give us feedback on how you found interacting with us. How did you like it? How do you like the webinar? Please do that. Um, would love to actually hear from you. Would love to know also where we can do improvements, what kind of topics you'd like us to, um, you know, sort of do in the next sessions as well. We're, ha we're definitely going to do a, a Q&A um, in a little while. So uh, yeah, I love it. Um, teams are going on and on. Of course you can, if there is anything that you've missed, okay, so the tools one in here, actually I can see what Mora has done. This one, we've actually done an entire webinar around tools. So that's the that's the link I think he shared on the uh, the YouTube channel. What digital tools webinar? Yeah, okay. So there is, you go to our YouTube page and you'll be able to find all the past webinars in there for sure. And there's one specifically on tools. Oh, that you tools, can use yeah. More. Yeah, tools you can use. All right, so. Before again, anything else, guys, this is the next webinar chat. 
Remember I said that we do a webinar every month and we do a chat, a Q&A section. And so there's a Q&A happening um, on the 26th of August. Again, it's a Thursday. We do it between 1 p.m. and 2.30 p.m. And this time around, we've got Janet uh, Machuka who's gonna join us. She's a marketing strategist herself. If you guys know Africa Tweet Chat, she is part of the Africa Tweet Chat, um, so ATC Academy. So please join us for that. Um, again, we'll put the link on the chat uh, for you to be able to register for this as well. And come with your questions. We'd love to hear your questions. So please do come with your questions. Here are the, the links and things. But yeah, okay. So maybe we can take some questions right now, Eunice. What do you think? Absolutely. Yeah, I think we've still got a whole bunch of people in here. And thank you so much for staying through this whole thing. I really, really, really appreciate this. Um, so let's take this, uh, your questions. Joe, I completely agree with you, integrated marketing campaigns. Ah, horrific sometimes. The bigger the campaign, the more a nightmare. It, it, I, I break out in a sweat if I have to do them. So yes, they are yeah something else. So if you still have time and you've got bundles, I appreciate you spending the time with us and you want to ask some questions, um, feel free to ask from tools to you know whatever we we're, we're here for you we we've got some time to take to take those questions so you can either ask in chat or you can unmute yourself and um, ask away don't be shy we are pretty tame and there's no stupid question by the way Hmm. Is the QR code working for everybody? For me, it doesn't seem to be working right now. Oh yeah, there we go. It's worked. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a silly story. My first campaign, um, I was using Bitly. A little uh, link shot, nothing. The one so, like here at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm doing a campaign for a tech entrepreneur and so I've done all the links to all the channels and stuff. The whole time it didn't work. And we've spent like $2,000. Whoa. <laughs> wow. I wanted the ground to swallow me up because I wasn't going to tell this guy we spent $2,000 and I have no metrics. It did well. But we had no metrics to share. Yeah. I think UTMs really do help to sort of do that, right? So even if it's a bit there, but it, you can see what channels people are coming from. So the UTMs mm -hmm. you get. But how sad would that be? Oh, my God. Yeah. That, that is an expensive. Uh, yeah. You could see results on Facebook, Twitter, and whatever. But I had sent all everything to and this, yeah, I, I don't even like thinking about it. I was like, that was a lesson learned. Yeah, expensive lesson. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. I, I remember doing a campaign where we're saying, you know, buy X number of tires because I used to work at Kingsway and then uh, get an umbrella. And they're like, what kind of like the, the feedback we got from customers is what kind of campaign is this? This is nonsense you know, umbrellas are something you just give anyway. Like this is not a campaign that you'd have to run, you know, they didn't see value in it at all. So we had to pull it down immediately. And so luckily it was very localized. Whoa. We hadn't yes. spent too much on it. Um, it. It was completely localized to that, you know, a couple of branches and stuff. So we, but anything that we'd printed out because we'd printed out some posters and stuff, of course that was just money down the drain, you know. Oh, mean customers, oh my God. I'd have come. I want an umbrella. What the? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they didn't but feel that, that that was yeah. value for money. <laughs> that's customers for you. Gosh, you're trying to do a good thing. They still kick you in the, in the ankles. <laughs> mm. Okay, we've got a question from Linda. Okay, go for it. Uh, does marketing apply in all sectors? I have a construction company. It's still very young, but I'm not sure how necessary it is to campaign. 
especially because in this particular industry, people don't seem to check uh, such as much. Okay. Whoa, absolutely. Um, I'm thinking, and this is my thoughts, and, and, and post COVID, and what I've seen people do is try to run away from landlords and move back with their parents and, uh, and try and find, you know, the little plots they bought and try and move in there to save money. Construction is going to be a big deal. They're going to try and figure out how they, they build with their little budgets uh, or whatever budgets they have. So if you're in the construction industry, people are still trying to navigate that nightmare of construction because of uh, scammers and uh, mm. expensive products and not know how to do it. So if you're in that industry and you're re doing residential, fantastic. And if you're doing commercial, even better. Um, so honestly, uh, get in there, put your face out there and let people know you're doing this. Uh, please do. I know that there's a guy who's doing uh, something on YouTube and honestly, the views on YouTube on his construction stuff has gone through the roof through just because of this COVID era. God, guys had nothing else to do but watch stuff on YouTube, right? So now he's getting customers. He can't even take any more uh, projects on because he's overwhelmed. So absolutely get, I don't think there's any industry, even those that are told by the Kenyan government that they can't advertise, the lawyers, the, the dentists, the doctors, their way of advertising is not putting ads and billboards out, but putting blog contexts or doing videos about their industries. So talking about capturing, uh, you know, to taking care of their health and all that good stuff is another form of advertising. So you you don't have to pay cash to get customers. So there's, there's a way to market yourself, honestly. These content strategies you could do that bring you customers. So yeah. go for it. Absolutely go for it. Yeah. Just to add to that, you know, what I've written over there, educate, engage, excite. Exactly. You know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't really have to be, you know, like an ad with an offer or anything like that. And yes. like you're in construction. So as NCA will actually also tell you that you can't do an ad. Uh, but what you can do is education stuff around it, you know, yes. like uh, what are the best ways of doing some construction work? What are some of the things that you need to consider? Yes. You know, think of that sort that you're actually doing. Like, for example, right now, um, how many of you would consider Eunice or I to actually help you with a campaign? Even if not right now, but maybe in the future when you have a budget, you know, would you consider us to even like guide you, for example, on doing a campaign? We've done everything educative right now, right? So would you consider that? So it's a it's a kind of thing that you're you're thinking about in different ways. You can do it yeah. as a as a as a vlog, where you yes. you put up the small little YouTube videos. Yeah. Or you can do it on Instagram again. You know, with the the correct hashtags. But something else that I would actually say that would really work, um, Linda, in your case case as well, um, is getting your customers to write some reviews even right now. There are so many other different people within the construct construction industry at the moment. And how do you stand out is you get your customers to give you a review. And that review is what your your exist your potential customers will be able to see that no, somebody else said that these guys are good. I've never heard about them, but I'm going to yes. go with them because there's a new review. There's a more recent review that the customer, this, this potential customer has written. And please make sure that you do it from your customers and not your family and friends. Yes. Do it through your suppliers, your other suppliers, for example. You can ask them to also review you on how it was to and interact with you. Was it, in, uh, was it um, a smooth running thing? Were you able to help them out? Your core constructors as well, people you're doing the, the construction uh, project together with, you know, ask them to review you as well such a good way of actually getting that and google my business is free yeah. open your google my business uh, account and get them to review you directly on that you know um so clients can actually be able to see that so it's not a testimonial testimonials are a lot of hearsay um yeah. you know rima said Eunice says that rima said this that's such a hearsay but if you do something like um directly and tell people look go into my google my business you'll be able to see 
what my customers are saying about me or my business. You know, it's actually black and white. Um, super helpful to actually attract more customers in your in your space, and that could be a campaign. That on its own of collecting feedback and collecting reviews is a campaign on its own. But All right. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. You know, even even the government actually are looking for people that they trust to do something for them. Absolutely. So you've Absolutely. got your visibility. So this is what we call it, visibility and credibility. So your visibility could be all the things that you do and the credibility is what people are saying about what you do. Exactly. Remember we're talking about uh, when you're creating a message and you don't have uh, trust and uh, credibility or trustworthy. This is how you begin to build it. Where people say, oh, I know her. And they know you because you did some YouTube channels. They've seen you yeah. doing projects with certain people. You, now you've built that credibility and trustworthiness. Yeah. When, when we struggle because we've no, uh, we, nobody connects us with anything. When we're starting out, that's why uh, small businesses struggle because we've no visibility anywhere. When you start to do business and you you do, uh, you know, you, you say, for example, uh, who's the young lady who's doing cakes and snacks? Are we, is she still in here? Just say something in chat. I, I, I can't I can't remember your name. I, the, the first birthday you do, I want you to do a splash on your Facebook page and say, hey, my first birthday uh, cake party, blah, blah, blah. Take pictures and do that. Just bought your first credibility there, right? Do a YouTube channel, of you, a YouTube video of you preparing for the first customer. You're buying credibility right there. Then people say, oh, look, she got customer, uh, you know, hired her, meaning somebody trusted her. And they see the whole process. And now they see the cake and it looks fantastic. And maybe you're doing little cupcakes along with it, the whole presentation. Before you know it, that whole bunch of people are beginning to trust because they're seeing the whole process and your presentation. And whatever doubts they had that you could deliver, I'm gone. Mm. That's how you do it. So the same thing with you, Linda. It's just the association and seeing you in action. Um, it, it doesn't have to be an ad in the ad sense where you're paying for it, where this is called uh, earned media this, or paid media. You're doing earned media. You're now putting yourself out there publicly speaking, uh, talking about what goes into uh, building a proper road, why roads fall apart, um, what's wrong with this section of this road, they may have missed a step here, whatever, diagnosing potholes and stuff, Do, doing things that you, you people would not have imagined they cared about and they're like, oh. So when we see bad roads, Linda can tell us why this road was done incorrectly and this is what, and you're doing content people would never have thought they'd care about. And there you go, gaining credibility. And it's a gap, it's a space, there's a gap in there. People are not doing it. Grab it, you know. Absolutely, grab it. Yep. So anybody else? We've gone over time. I want to close Completely. the session as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, guys, you can if you if you ever have a question or something, please reach out to us. You know. Yes. Uh, but we'd really like to thank you all for coming and spending some time with us and getting to know more about uh, marketing campaigns. We hope that this has really helped you guys out. Uh, much appreciated um, yes please welcome. join that whatsapp group let's continue the conversation please don't hesitate uh, to join and ask questions because the only way we grow this nation is we helping each other out right so don't hesitate to get in there and say hey this is where i'm at this is where i'm stuck can you let, help me get unstuck um, there's no stupid question. Please go. And, and sometimes you're asking a question, somebody else had the same question, then we answer it and it helps everybody else. Jump in there and let's let's grow our businesses. Actually, there is something that is that I've just been shared with. So while let me see if I can be able to like just download it. Hang on a minute. Um, 
Oh, and Nina, could you share? We uh, MBM has a special on uh, Google Ads. Google Ads are very tricky, and and sometimes if you're not sure how to do them, they can take your time and not take your money, and I mean, you're not getting the most out of it. We have yep. a special. Just share the that in chat and in the WhatsApp group if you're interested. Whenever you're interested in this, there's no time limit. Um, so hang on to it and use it whenever you're ready for it. And actually, I don't know if that's the one she's opening up. Yeah. yeah. So send it as a snapshot, uh, our, our image, and they can um, send it to us when they're ready to do a Google ad. Especially if it's your first time and you want to do one and you don't know how to get started. Yeah, we'd also be able to share it via email. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, everybody. All right, then. Thanks, everyone, and have a good uh, rest of the day. Asanteni Sana for joining us today. And, you know, uh, we're happy to have you guys here. Thank you so much. And more business to you. Bye now. Bye, Joe. Bye, Patrick. Bye, Edwin, Linda, Mary, Faith, Paul, William. Uh, Pleasure to you meet you all. all. Jethaniel, nice to have you here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I don't, know if, I don't even know. I keep calling him Jathaniel, but I don't know if it's Jathniel. I'm oh, we're saying it all wrong. I think Please so. Please tell us. Are we butchering your name? Yeah, Polly for that. Lovely, Linda. Thank you so much. It was lovely meeting you as well. Have a good one, guys. Oh, there's somebody I missed here, and I can't see. I don't know.